Hey teachers, today's students are gonna make pictographs. So this week we're gonna dive back into data and we're gonna take another week to explore making and analyzing pictographs, making and analyzing bar graphs, and then we will close out the week with a little data project. For this week that's coming up, we will be using the materials from my math chapter seven. So it's really just an opportunity for kids to supplement and enrich what they did in their Engage New York lessons. You're gonna open reminding kids about collecting data using tally marks so we can collect data about these balloons. We know that we can use tally marks to represent how many of each color they are. So let's start by counting the red balloons first. I'm gonna put one tally for every balloon I count. Now teachers, instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, and putting six tallies, you wanna count a balloon, put a tally. So here's one red balloon, let me put one tally. Here's another red balloon, another tally. Another one, another tally, another one, another tally, another one. Up, oh, this is my fifth one, so I have to put my fifth tally going across and my last balloon right here. So I have six red balloons. Okay, now let's count our green balloons. So I have three green balloons and finally orange. Let's count how many orange there are. What you're really doing here is you're building one-to-one -one correspondence. You're building the idea that for every balloon there is, I use a tally mark to represent that one balloon, or for every vote I take, I put a tally for every vote. Okay, so there are five orange balloons. Well, we already know how to do this. So today we're gonna think about how we can use pictographs to represent the same set of data. Everyone say pictographs. When I hear the word pictograph, I hear pick. Pick sounds like picture. Well, that's what a pictograph is. A pictograph uses pictures or symbols to represent a set of data. Just like the graphs we've looked at, it has a title, it tells you what the graph is about, it has our labels to tell you each category, but pictographs also have keys. A key tells you what each picture or each symbol represents. So when I'm using a pictograph, I have to pick a symbol to represent the data. And I want my symbol to be nice and easy to draw. So I think I'm just gonna use a triangle for each balloon. So rather than put a tally mark down, I'm gonna draw a quick picture or a quick symbol. I'm gonna draw a triangle. So now I need to take my data that's in my tally chart and put it into my pictograph. I have to be careful to match each category up with each category. I see that these are in a different order. Here I see red first, but up here I see green first. So let me put my red balloons in my pictograph. I see that I have six red balloons. That means that I'm gonna use six triangles to represent the six red balloons. Here's one red balloon, here's another red balloon, here's another red balloon, Notice that I'm putting one picture or symbol in each box. That way, it's gonna make my graph easy to read. Okay, I'm done with red. Now let me go to green. I put three triangles because each triangle represents one balloon and there are three green balloons. You can see how you're coming back to this idea of one-to-one -one correspondence, but especially here, checking the key. I'm sure many of us saw that as our students took the NWEA, they were looking at pictographs where the key dictated how they read the graph. Within the first grade standard, students only will be asked to read graphs where each symbol is representative of one item or one vote. But we do wanna teach kids that they have to check the key in case something does show up and they can extend their thinking into a key where the symbols represent two or five or 10. Okay, finally, let's do orange. All right, so look, we represented the same data using our pictograph, but instead of using tallies, we decided to use a quick picture or a quick symbol to represent the balloons. There's still three green balloons, six red balloons, and five orange balloons. Teachers, you can see here how you're also building really strong habits around the work that we want kids to show. So this is called a pictograph, and now we can answer some questions about our pictograph. And then come back to your measurement rules. So when we made our pictograph, how did we use our measurement rules to help us represent our balloons, turn and talk to your partner, and then maybe one additional connection. So we've been talking a lot about data, we've been talking about tally charts, we've been talking about pictographs. Let's think of a time in our life we might need to collect data. Maybe a time in our classroom when we might wanna collect data about something, or a time at home, or another time. Think of a time when collecting data might be important, and then share it with your partner. 
come back together, share some ideas. Oh, if we're deciding to watch a movie as a class, we might want to take a vote. So collecting and representing data is a really important skill that can help us make decisions in real life and then just lots of practice together. While there are slides for guided practice, there is also paper GP linked in the long-term plan so that kids aren't just watching you make pictographs, they're actually getting to practice asking favorite colors and collecting votes in a pictograph and also using the key to select the symbol that they're gonna use to represent their data.